um, in just a few days' time, we'll say bye-bye to October. October 2023 will not be anymore. Amen. And we are moving into a new month. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. I want us to put our hands up and just wave it in adoration and say, Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your loving kindness. It can only be God. Lord, we give you praise. There is no one like you. Anyone that is watching online, you are listening to us wherever you are, just in adoration. You can lift up your hands, but lift up your hearts to the King of glory and just exalt him and say, Lord, we thank you. We we'll give you all the glory. We honor you. Oh, with an appreciation in our hearts, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, children. Say thank you to the Lord God Almighty. He's still keeping you, keeping everything concerning you to be perfect. Lord, we say thank you. Glory be to your name, O oh Lord. Father, we have come to worship you this morning. I don't know what you have come for, but I've come to worship him. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords is his name. The I am that I am. Alpha, Omega, everlasting. The only living God. That's the one I've come to worship. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We worship your name. Oh, Lord, we bless your name. Lord, we worship you. Oh, that is why we say, King of kings. Majesty.
We want to praise him. I, I, I mean, I'm so excited to see people. People are smiling because our God is good. He's, he's, he's such a good. I don't know why I'm just excited. Hallelujah. Please put our hands together for our pastors. I know that the, the, the anniversary is on its way and it's going to be glorious. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for him.
his holy name, our Lord and our God, we give you praise. We exalt you. We magnify you. We lift you up on high, declaring that you are good and your mercy endures forever. You are kind. You are reliable. You are dependable. You are slow to anger. You are swift to bless. You are the almighty. You are the self-existing God. There is none like you are God. None can be compared with you. From age to age, you are the same. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You're not a man that you will lie. You're not the son of man that you repent. We join the 24 elders. We bow down before your throne of grace. We cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. You are merciful. You are full of compassion. You are slow to anger. You are swift to bless. You are the almighty. There is none like you. None can be compared with you. We lift you up on high. We praise and honor you, our God, our King, our Savior, our provider, our sustainer, our strength, our shield, our height, our, our hiding place, the rock of ages, the God of all flesh. We give you praise. We worship you. We exalt you. We lay all that we have, all that we are, and all that we will ever be, we lay at your feet this morning. Ah, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We lift you up on high. Hey, we worship you. We worship you, our maker, our redeemer, our provider, our strength, our shield, Jehovah Sabaoth. We give you praise. Jehovah Elohim, we give you glory. Jehovah Sikenu, we worship you. Jehovah Mekadeshkum, we give you glory. We exalt you. We give you praise. There is none like you, our God. None can be compared with you. We maker, we worship you. Ah, Lord, we give you praise. Hey, we give you glory. You are higher than the highest. You are greater than the greatest. You are the immortal. You are the invincible. You are the only wise God. You are the God of all flesh. You are the one who does as he pleases. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory. We know without you we are nothing. But with you we are everything. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We say be thou glorified. Be thou exalted. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen, amen. The Bible says in Psalm 95, it says, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock our salvation. Let us come before him, before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hands are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands from the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Let us just begin to thank God for the gift of life, for the breath of life in our nostrils, for the privilege to be among the living, for good health, for sound mind. Today is what now? The 29th day of the the month of October. Let us give God praise for his goodness, for his faithfulness, for keeping his covenant of life concerning us. Our Lord and our God, we just want to say thank you. We say thank you first of all for who you are. We say thank you for being our God. We say thank you for being our maker. We say thank you for standing by us. We say thank you for being our standby and our way maker. We say thank you for fighting our battles. We say thank you for giving us victory. We say thank you for the gift of life. We say thank you for keeping your covenant of life concerning us. We say thank you for fighting our battles. We say thank you for your presence in our midst. We say thank you. The Sabbath says, who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you think about us, that you care for us, that you visit us? So Lord, we just want to say thank you. For being mindful of us, we say thank you. For caring about us, we say thank you. The Bible says you have engraven us on the palm of your hands and our walls are continually before you. The Bible says that even the hairs on our head are numbered. We say thank you for caring so much about us. We say thank you for loving us. We say thank you for saving us. We say thank you for the salvation of our souls. We give you glory and praise. We acknowledge your help in our lives. We raise our evidence at this morning. And we say thus far you have helped us. Thus far you have sustained us. Thus far you have met our needs. Thus far you have exceeded our expectations. Father, for every miracle that you have sent our way, we say thank you. For the things we asked for and you did, we say thank you. For the ones we, you didn't do because the time has not yet come, we say thank you. For making a way where there seemed to be no way, we say thank you. We 
give you glory even when we had given up on ourselves. Father, you came through on our behalf. Father, we just want to say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We worship you. We exalt your holy name. We magnify you, O God. We say, be thou exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we have thanked. We could go on and on thanking God. I feel like today all we need to do really is to thank God. So let us just say thank you to him. Say, Lord, I thank you for who you are. I thank you for what you have done in my life. I thank you for loving me. I thank you for carrying me. Our Lord, I thank you for all that you have done. Father, you have done much more than I could ever think, ask, or imagine. So, Lord, I just want to give you thanks. I want to return all glory unto you. Where do I begin to start, Lord? From the, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Lord, I say you have been good. You have been faithful. You have been kind. From the 1st of January even up until now, you have been good. You have been faithful. You have been kind. Ah, Lord, I thank you. You have met my needs. Lord, I thank you for fighting my battles. I thank you, O oh God, for giving me victory. Giving me victory over death. Giving me victory over sickness and disease. Giving me victory over shame and reproach. Giving me victory over the wiles of the enemy. I thank you because you have not allowed us to become prey in the teeth of our enemies. Our Lord, we just want to say thank you. As a people, we say thank you. As a church, we say thank you. On behalf of our families, we say thank you. As house of joy for all nations, we say thank you. And we return all glory, all praise, all honor unto you. On behalf of our nation, on behalf of United Kingdom, we say thank you. On behalf of every nation of the world, we say thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We worship and exalt your holy name. We say, be thou glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. The Bible says in Psalm, sorry, in Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says, but those who wait on the Lord, wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I'd like to encourage us this morning to just thank God for the season of praying and fasting we just had. Let us thank him for renewed strength. Let us thank him for renewed strength. Let us thank him because he has caused us to, to walk and not be weary, to run and not faint. He has literally carried us on his wings. Our Lord and our God, we say thank you. We say thank you for renewed strength. We say thank you for renewed strength in the place of prayer. We say thank you for renewed strength in our health. We say thank you for renewed strength in every area of our lives. Lord, we just want to say thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor. We exalt your holy name. We say be thou glorified. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. If you open our Bibles, please, to Psalm 144, which was our anchor sp scripture for the prayer and fasting season. I'll just read verses 12 to 14. Psalm 144, 12 to 14. It says that our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth, that our daughters may be as pillars sculptured in palace tiles, that our bands may be full, supplying all kinds of produce, that our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our fields, that our oxen may be well laden, that there be no breaking in or going out, that there be no outcry in our streets. Amen. First of all, I'd like us to pray for our children. That first bit says our sons will be as plants grown up in their youth. Let us pray for our sons and our daughters and all those who are connected to us, that God will help them, that God will cause them to grow and they be as plants grown in their youths in Jesus' name, that their lives will show forth the glory of God, the majesty and the presence of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we thank you for our sons and our daughters. We thank you for the children, the youth, the young adults in our midst. We give you glory and we pray for them, that your hand will be upon them to do them good. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, our Lord, that according to your word, they will increase in, in stature, they will increase in favor, they will increase, oh God, in favor before you and before men. They will increase in wisdom. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray that your hand will be upon them to do them good. In the mighty name of Jesus, that your glory will shine forth in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, that they will not be tools in the hands of the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will not weep, we will not mourn, we will not sorrow over them. It will cause our joy concerning them to be full. They will fulfill destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, that 
according to your word, they will be as pillars cultured in Palestine. In the mighty name of Jesus, their lives will show forth your goodness, your glory, your kindness. They will be influencers. They will be, oh God, people who will affect their generation for you. They will be rulers and captains in the industry, in life, in Jesus' name. You will promote them. You will lift them up. You will announce them, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Your goodness, your mercy will follow them even every day of their lives in Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed that verse 13 and part of 14 it talks about prosperity it talks about fruitfulness and abundance so we're going to pray this morning that our bands will be full we need we will not lack any good thing in the mighty name of jesus the bible says i wish above all things that was god speaking concerning us that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Say, Lord, according to your word, my bands will be full in the mighty name of Jesus. I will not lack any good thing in the mighty name of Jesus because you will supply all my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we thank you because you are the great provider. You are our source. Our Lord, we pray concerning ourselves, our finances, concerning every area of our lives. We decree and declare according to your word that we will prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. We will be fruitful in the mighty name of Jesus. We will live in abundance. We will not lack any good thing to the glory and honor of your holy name in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that you bless our bread and our waters and take sickness away from the midst of us according to your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name mighty name we have prayed the last bit says that there be no breaking in or going out that there be no outcry in our streets we're going to pray that concerning us and every member of our family let us cover ourselves with the blood of jesus and decree and declare that it is well with us that the hand of god will be upon our lives even to keep us safe in the mighty name of jesus our father and our god we thank you your word says that he who dwells in your secret place shall abide under your shadow, that shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So our Lord and our God, we cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus, and we hide ourselves under the shadow of the Almighty. We say no evil will befall us, no plague will come near us, no weapon formed or fashioned against us will prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, according to your word, we pray that there will be no breaking in. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no outcry in our homes. There will be no outcry in our families. We will not weep. We will not mourn. We will not sorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and our God, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, that in our families, in our homes, in our streets, there shall be no, no outcry. In the mighty name of Jesus, there will be no sorrow, no weeping. In the mighty name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord will continually be our strength. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We know the flip side of sorrow is rejoicing. So we're going to say that in my house, in, in our families, in our homes, in our streets, there shall be shouts of joy, there shall be shouts of rejoicing in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we pray this morning that the sound of rejoicing will not cease from our lives, will not cease from our homes, will not cease from our lips. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, your joy will fill our hearts, your joy will fill our homes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. We bless and honor your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lastly, I'd like us to pray concerning the anniversary celebration coming up this weekend, that God himself will be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord and our God, we just want to commit the anniversary celebrations into your hands. Father, we pray that in all that we do, that the Holy Spirit will take over, your presence will be in our midst, beyond the singing, the dancing, and the rejoicing. We will see you, we will hear you, we will experience you in the mighty name of Jesus, that for everyone who comes, we will encounter you in a new way, in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you all the glory and praise, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Lord and our God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you because you are a prayer answering God. We thank you because you have said we should call upon you and you will hear an answer. We thank you because we have called and we give you glory for answered prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Can we please be seated? Praise the Lord, church. 
Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord, church. Some people are not saying anything yet. Praise the Lord, church. Some people are still seated. Praise the Lord, church. So this morning, I just want you to turn to five people you haven't spoken to today and just welcome them to church. Say something nice to them. It could be as simple as Jesus loves you. Five people you haven't spoken to today. Just welcome them to church today. Say something nice to them. You're welcome. It's good to be in the presence of God this morning. Thank you. Everyone forgot me. Hey, nobody's got Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. It's, it's, it's a wonderful time to be in God's presence today. Our Bible reading will be taken from Ecclesiastes chapter Three, chapter 3, from verse 1 through to the end, which is verse 22. Ecclesiastic 3, verse 1 to 22. A time for everything. If you are there, shout a big hallelujah. Verse 1. For everything, there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh. A time to grieve and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to turn away. A time to search and a time to quit searching. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be quiet and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to eat. A time for war and a time for peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? Verse 10. I have seen the burden God has placed on us all. Yet God has made everything beautiful for his own time. He has planted eternity in the human heart. And even so, people cannot see the old scope of God's work from beginning to the end. So I concluded, there is nothing better than to be happy and enjoy ourselves as long as we can. And people should eat and drink and enjoy the fruits of their labor, for these are gifts from God. And I know that whatever God does is final. Nothing can be added to it or nothing taken from it. God's purpose is that people should fear him. What is happening now has happened before. And what will happen in the future has happened before. Because God makes the same things happen over and over again. The injustice of life. Verse 16. I also noticed that under the sun, there is evil in the court room. Yes, even the courts of law are corrupt. I said to myself, in due season, God will judge everyone, both good and bad, for all their deeds. I also thought about the human condition, how God proves to people that they are like animals. For people and animals share the same fate, both breed and both must die. So people have no real advantage over the animals. How meaningless. Both go to the same place. They came from dust and they return to dust. For who can prove that the human spirit goes up and the spirit of animals go down into the earth? Verse 22 and the last. So I saw that there is nothing better for people than to be happy in their work. That is our lot in life. And no one can bring us back to see what happened after we die. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Shall we rise and take um, to take our hymn? Because we do 
said he has started healing this morning so we are going to do things differently can we just be talking to the almighty God and if he wants us to join our faith with yours healing can be anything healing can be physical it can be spiritual it can be psychological it can be material it can be financial Healing, whatever is not according to the will of God in your life and my life, the Almighty God will touch it this morning. Are you online? The Almighty God said he started healing. You that you have joined, please connect and receive your healing. Whatever it is that we need healing for. Some of us don't even know. The destiny that God has created for us needs healing. Oh, God, we give you praise. And I want you to just come out right now. We just touch your forehead. I ask pastor to come forward, please. We just touch your forehead. Just go, put your hands on your head, and pray earnestly. Just come quickly. Just quickly. He touched me. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, 
Everywhere we need healing, oh God. Father, heal us this morning. In the name of Jesus, heal us, oh God. Yes, you came to set the captive free. Oh God, oh God, oh God, lay your hands upon my life. Mandere broko shekere brakasanda. Yendere bobo ye. Yendere broko shekere brakasanda ye. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We exalt your name. We thank you. There is nothing the Almighty God cannot do. Lazarus was dead in the grave. Three days he had started to stink. But the Lord Jesus Christ got to that grave and said, Lazarus, come forth. You are going to prophesy into your life. Every good thing in my life that have died, I prophesy unto you now, come forth in the name of Jesus. I lay my hands on my head and you online lay your hands on your head. Any destiny, perversion, destiny, delay, whatever is not functioning as the almighty God created me, I call you forth. Comfort in the name of Jesus. Comfort in the name of Jesus. Whatever is not written in the destiny of my life, I uproot you out by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I decree right now, ancient of days, that the word of God is being fulfilled, is being made manifest in my life, in my destiny. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And I want the keyboardists to stop playing and the drummer to stop playing. Just lay your hands on your head. Just begin to prophesy upon yourself. And just say, Lord, the Bible says I will lay my hand upon my head, upon myself, and I will recover. I command my life, recover. Recover from any loss. Recover from any setback. Recover from any stagnation. Recover in the name of Jesus. I say recover. I speak to my soul. Recover. Comfort. Recover into the destiny that God has created you for. I say recover in the name of Jesus. Receive power to become whom God has called you to be in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. As believers, indeed, there is nothing God cannot do. And so we believe, because the Almighty God said to me this morning, I've started healing. So I want you to come forth with your testimony, that area that God has healed. We want to hear it. I know that I know that somebody was touched here today. And that person, well, is you and I. I don't want to be selfish. Praise God forevermore. Praise God. Father, we thank you. We never know when you will come calling. That's why every time we have opportunity to be in your presence, we come. And Lord, even as we go into your word, we want to thank you for that which you have already started to do. We pray that the entrance of your word will give light, will give life, and will give us understanding. Holy Spirit of the living God, you are the one that will give comprehension and enlightenment. We ask that you come and teach us and give us the power to understand. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we are going to be continuing the discussion we started last Sunday. Um, and it's a journey to self-discovery, part two. A journey to self-discovery, part two. Just to recap, I encourage those of us who were not in church or you have not really listened well to also go online on YouTube 
to listen to the messages. We have found that um, the reason that many of us humans don't actually rise to where God wants us to be is because we truly do not understand how valuable we are as human beings. Um, we were born into uh, a culture, a society that is being engineered to benefit a few people. So for centuries, as we can see with the issue of a woman that was caught in adultery, for centuries, people have manipulated fellow human beings for their own profit. And so there is an ideology that does not align with the plan and purpose of God for our lives as human beings. So last week, we talked about know yourself what. Know, your, know what you are what. When we talk about self-worth, it's a sense of one's own value, well, how you value yourself as a human being. Um, I believe that what's going on around the world, the easy killings of people, the taking, those who are even peddling drugs, and those who are engineering groups of people, society, to go in the wrong direction and, and adopt um, harmful lifestyle so that they can benefit from those lifestyles is because humans don't understand the value of human beings. If we begin to understand our value, we will behave to one another differently. We will even behave to ourselves differently. And so we talked about, you know, how do we rate ourselves last week? Um, how do we value ourselves? What is our own estimation? I'm talking about yourself now. How do you estimate yourself? How do you define yourself? Do you define yourself of person of high value or a person of high caliber? And then we ask, where do you base your definition? What is your value system? What's your value scale? What do you use? And we ran through the value scale in society, uh, one of which I will add, I will not be able to do that. Another value scale in society is family connection, family name. You know, if, if your family name is popular, you know, like the Kennedys, for example, or even the Trumps. You will see people, when they marry, they hyphenate their names. So you can say, Mary Kennedy, this. So I want to be attached to that family root. So, um, so that's the value system. So somebody whose family is not famous, should they not feel valuable because they don't have a famous family? So that's another value system that we use. So we run through all the value system in society. And then we looked at who is a human being. I want to see those pictures again, please. Who is a human being? The one we, we looked at. So we looked at a human being. I think Ecclesiastics that we read was talking purely base, basing his observation on the human life on earth. That verse that you have just read does not include spiritual life. Solomon was just talking purely on life on earth. And that's why he was comparing death to if an animal dies and a person dies, there's no difference. He was just talking purely on death physically. So that verse has to do with physical life. If you are not a spiritual person, you may, get, you may miss the mark because you hear something like uh, there's no difference between a human being and an animal. There is. Because an, a human being has souls, an animal doesn't have. So a human being will go to heaven or hell. Animals don't go anywhere. So as a Christian, when you read the Bible, please try and understand the context in which that Bible or that scripture was written. So that's Ecclesiastes there. So we want to see, you know, what intrigued me was the sculpturing of a human being. If you look at the way, I think we have medical people in our midst, the way a human being is designed, the knitting of that person, a human being is the most complicated, um, I, when I mean complicated, creation of all of God's creation. When I mean complicated, a human being is a mystery. The way God designed us and how all 
the things in our body, in our path, function. Humans, we don't even understand it. It's intricate, thank you. We don't even understand it. A human being is so special. So when we see human beings, we are special beings. And that's why it pains God. When God sees what he has made in his own image and likeness, behaving like a nobody, it pains God. So we looked at another, we looked at the, the inner being. We look, it was in Psalm. If you want to know your words, read Psalm 139. We looked at the inner being, the inside of a human being. And we compared that all human beings, black, white, Chinese, India, we all have the same inner organs. There's no difference. So there's no discrimination. There's no racism when it comes to the organs. Do we, do we accept that? So the, the, the black heart and the white heart, they are all the same. Praise God. So if we as Christians understand that we can conquer racism because we are operating from a higher knowledge. So it's knowing who you are. And we look at the various parts that is inside the person again. I am very, very wonderful. Even the psalmist says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. So on the surface, if you just take a human being on the surface, it's a wonderful creation of God. Praise God. So you can even value yourself from that angle to say, I am worthy. I am wonderful. So that it will stop you from self-harm. Because if you know that you are a created being, a mystery on earth, somebody that is created in the image and likeness of God, you will respect yourself. You will respect that being. The things you do will be dignified to yourself. Self-value. That's what we are looking at. But because, and then again, last week I want to be quick, we said we should untie ourselves from everything that we have tied ourselves to. I'm looking for some group of people, but I can't see them. Okay? There's only one here. Where are the youth? The young people. Oh, they're in church. Okay. All right. Praise God. Two of them. The rest of them. Okay. So we said, if you are here and you have been evaluating yourself based on your achievement, it's good to achieve good things. It's good. Uh, based on your background, based on your qualification, based on what you have, your possessions, it is good to detach yourself from that assessment because that assessment doesn't work. There are lots of people who have everything and they still end up committing suicide. They, so the assessment of possession, of family, or whatever, did not help them value themselves as they ought. So as Christians, we need to dis touch ourselves from that value. Praise God. So today we are going to continue uh, to detach myself from the wrong skills that I've used in time past um, where we need to continue to grow in our self-worth. So today I ask the question, why do I need to do regular appraisals or assessment? Why? Why do we need to do that? Why do I need to continue to see myself as a valued being? Uh, it's just to be sure my self-worth is not tied to anything. I'm not tying it to anything. I'm not tying it to my position in life. I can be an astronaut or be anything. Your self-worth is not in that thing. Your self-worth, as a matter of fact, if we tie our self-worth to things, we have actually devalued God. Because our worth is in God. Therefore, anything you tie your self-worth to is too small compared to God. So tie your self-worth to God. That's when you will really find your value. Okay, so what is self-worth? There's, there's dictionary definition. I said before. It's a sense of one's own value as a human being. That's one side. And it's also a feeling. It's a feeling. It's how you feel. It's a feeling of I am worthy. I am worthy. I'm created by God. And I deserve self-respect. I deserve to respect myself. It's a feeling. And do you know if you respect yourself, very soon everybody around you will begin to respect you. If you receive yourself well as somebody that is worthy, praise God. However, to strike a balance, uh, let's read 
one scripture now, First Peter 2.17, to strike a balance between understanding human beings are equal. The president of any nation of the world is not better than the person sleeping under the bridge. As a human being, let's understand that. As a human being, we all have equal value. It's good. When we die, we read uh, Ecclesiastes. Where does every human being go? Both the president and the beggar. Equal value. Equal value. So you don't see a president and see yourself less. You are as equal to that president as he is. Minus his office, you are the same. Okay. So, know your value. Once you know your value, then we, we begin because I am so excited. God is changing things, but he wants to create people. He's trying to grow people who actually know their worth so that he can transfer power to them. Because if you don't know your worth, when you receive power, you won't know what to do with it. If God should give you a billion pounds now, people from church will be richer than the richest men now. Because the kingdom of God must be built. But God is going to build solid people who know who they are inside. Who know that they cannot be bought. You know, people say there is a value for everything. There's a price for everything. But I want to tell you now, hear me now. There's no price for a human being. A human being is priceless. I will bring you there. So 1 Peter 2, 17. It says, recognize the value of every person. I'm reading the Passion Translation. Recognize the value of every person. Or when you say, when you recognize value, then you give respect. Is that not so? If you value something, you will respect that thing. So another version, the NNT says, respect everyone. That's a plain fee for everybody. Respect. Then it, there's four things there God says we should do. He said, love the family of believers. So that's another level of honor, of respect. I see somebody, he's a believer, I love that believer. Because we both have the same father, God. Okay, that's another level of respect. He said, but fear God. That's another being to respect. Because remember, God is not a man. We are talking from a human level now. Fear God. God is not your mate. He's not my mate. Fear him. If he says anything, like I was kneeling down, God says I'm healing. I say I have my message. He says, go, am I the owner of the church? If the owner of the church says I'm healing, just come here and do what they told you to, to do. So whatever they tell you to do, you do. Because he is God. Fear God. Then the other thing he says, respect the king. That respect the king there means respect the rulers. Anyone in your environment that is ruling, that is in leadership, that is leading, they have to be that honor, that respect for that individual. Because that office did not come easy. Leaders have a lot of burdens and direction that they carry. They have vision. That's why they can lead. So not everybody will enter the office of a leader at the same time. So if you find a leader, give that leader that respect. Doesn't matter what you think, he's leading. To lead is not easy. If you think it's easy, you lead. Okay? So that's what God said. And respect the leader. And that leader means, even in your workplace, let's teach children to respect authority. Even in schools. Even, you, you see, that's why God says, honor your parents. The parent also is the physical parent and the spiritual parent because they carry authority. Honor them. So, even though we are talking about human beings are equal on the plain level, but there is a place of honor. That's where I'm going. So you have a balance. So when I see people who are successful, I honor them for what they have achieved. Not because I feel less, but I honor them for what they have achieved. The Bible says the leader who works diligently is, is what's it called? Is worthy. Is, is worthy of double honor. So you give that leader double, the one you will give others who are not leaders. So we must understand that. Because some people fail to understand the honor that they should give to offices or people or achievement because we are teaching equality of human beings and they got into trouble. And you find them in Numbers 16, 1 to 25. They were called 
Koran, Korah, Data, and Abiram. They dishonor leadership. And the Bible told us that the ground opened up and swallowed them, swallowed their congregation, and every one of them that were involved in that rebellion against leadership. Authority must be honored. Some people who refused to honor it, they did not live to tell the story. So we have to understand authority. Because I see that there is a disconnect in our relation. Authority may be in your face, but you have to honor it because it's authority. So bring us back to self-worth. So I hope we understand it. So we respect people based on their achievements. It's not easy to achieve anything. It's easy to go to law school, achieve degree. or It's not easy to become a scientist. Um, you know, because people put in the effort to honor that, respect that eff effort. But still see yourself wherever you are at. None of us can be at the same place at the same time. Wherever you are at, you are still a human being worthy of respect. But also you give respect and honor to who respect and honor is due. People have those who is due. So bringing us back now to self-worth. And I have a phrase that I, I have found for myself. I will share it. Who are you? The question. Can you describe yourself without talking about your career? Without talking about your achievement? Try. Describe yourself. So if I ask the question... Who are you based on what you have heard? What will you say? Good. I'm a child of God. Does that easily come easily? You are walking on the street and somebody says, hello, hi. Tell me about yourself. Do you just say, yeah, I'm a child of God. You will give your name. Then you will say, you know, I walk X and X, this and this. But we are learning something new. We have detached our self-worth from our names, from anything else. So we start afresh. So we see here, I say, it's a quote, I am a person created in the image and likeness of God, blessed and authorized to dominate the earth. That's who I am. A person created in the image and likeness of God, I am blessed, not only am I blessed, I am authorized to dominate the earth. Not to dominate people, to dominate the earth. What that simply means, I am authorized, to dominate my area of influence. We all have areas where we are influential. We all have gifts. So if you have a gift, it is your responsibility to develop that gift, work on that gift, fine-tune that gift, make it excellent, and deliver that gift to humanity. Give it to humanity so that, tell your neighbor, produce something I can buy. Produce. Please produce. Hello. Produce something I can buy. That means add value. Add value. Add value to your environment. Add value to yourself. Though you are a human being, the earth still needs your gift. So you walk. You see, if we are self-focused, because the race is against yourself, not against any other person. If we are self-focused, we will not be comparing, we will not be looking, we will not be... You are running against yourself because there is a line set, there is a goal for you, there is something God has given you to achieve on the earth. And because we have been so... Young people, listen to me, start now. Because we have been so distracted, we are not adding value. You need to find your purpose, discover it, focus on it, work on it, fine-tune it, Present it to people. If the fruit, apple fruit is not producing fruit, what will you and I eat? The tree is meant to produce fruit. You are a tree. You and I, we are trees on the earth. Human trees. We are supposed to produce fruits of righteousness that will bless humanity. People of God, we are sitting down. We are complaining about the unbelievers whose fathers are devils. And all they do, they produce, is destroy humanity. Their businesses, their ideologies is to destroy, is just to make money. But not you. If the idea that God has given you, you bring it forth, it will bless humanity. The earth is waiting for you and I. 
The earth is waiting. There's something you have that I don't have. There's something I have. You have to bless me before you go. The little I have, I'm using. Many of us are running away from places where we ought to be blessing people. Because we don't want to do the work that it requires for you to give value. Because people will not just buy anything. Not the culture that we are coming from. In this culture, they buy excellence. In this culture, they buy package. In this culture, if you deliver it, no matter how good it is, if the packaging is not right, you are not going to have your client. So we must grow. We must develop. We must know the market that we are going to, de to deliver to and work on it. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, I have work to do for, on myself. I have work to do on myself. Self-development. Self-development. Don't just sit down and be content. Ah, uh, no. Okay. So we move on. We've seen what God says that we should do there. What is a healthy self-worth? How do I define a healthy self-worth? I've seen human beings now. But what is a healthy self-worth? A healthy self-worth is loving yourself and accepting who you are. You love yourself and you accept who you are. If you are dark skin, you are the most beautiful skin on earth. You accept yourself as you are. No change. You are a perfect creation of God. You don't need another person's type of hair. You see this, my afro? My God. That's what God gave me from heaven. Amen. Yes, I could wear wigs. I could straighten it if I like, but I'm not looking to envy any other person with any other color. No, I'm the best that there is. Please check the earth. The seven point something billion people on earth, none of us are the same. None. So you are one of a kind. There's no replacement. So why would I want to be like somebody else? Why would somebody, because it's white. Not white, I said it last week. There are no white people. I'm online. Yes. We are all human beings of color. I've never seen a white person. Who has ever seen a white person here? Please raise up your hand. If you have seen a white person. If you are wearing white. Omoji, you are wearing white. Stand up. Let us see. Have you seen anybody that's white like that? That would be a ghost. Okay. We are all human beings are people of color. The Europeans are people of color. We are just psychology, engineering. We are deceived human brains from generation to generation. And all of us believed in a lie. And we are working with it. No. We are now wise. If you say I'm wise, say no, sir. You are colored. What's your color? Pink. Orange. Well, praise God. There is no white human being. So don't deceive me. Please. We are all the same. Praise God. If you don't have this knowledge, you cannot rule the world. No, you can't. Because you will be intimidated. Unless you know who you are deep inside. Then you can stand your ground. So what is a healthy self-worth? I said. Let's look at it. Praise God. I'm trying to look for my... Okay. It's loving yourself, accepting yourself, self-acceptance. How can I love and accept what I don't know? A healthy self-worth, number one, is knowing yourself. God knows me perfectly in Psalm 139. Now it is time for you to know yourself from the viewpoint of the one who knows you perfectly. He created you, he knows you. So you will need to go on a self-discovery journey through the scriptures to discover who you truly are. Ah, uh, number one, that's a healthy self-worth. What's a healthy self-worth? A healthy self-worth is to know your capabilities and your limitations. What are you able to do? What can you not do? Some of us want to do everything. If you're like me, think I'm good here, and there, here, and there, here, and there, everywhere. You want to do everything. Know your capabilities and know what you cannot do. Healthy self-worth. What are you good at? What are you not good at? You must be good at something. 
and fast. <laughs> Don't worry, listen to the tape again. What are you good at? What are you not good at? A healthy self-worth is acknowledging your strengths and your weaknesses. Where are your strengths? Where are you capable? Where are your capabilities? You know your strengths. You know some of us are self-deceived. We overestimate what we are not. And we underestimate what we are. Overestimation of what you are not. Please, let's be real. If we are going to have a healthy self-worth, we have to be truthful. We have to, re, what's it called now? Introspective. You have to look inward and then come out with the truth. Only you know yourself. It's acknowledging your strengths and your weaknesses and not rejecting yourself because you may not, you know, be, I'm not Tiger Wood now. I don't know how to play golf. So that's his gift. I'm not even going to have a sleepless night about that. So if somebody can come here and sing like Canary, that's not my gift. Excuse me, I stay in my office. I enjoy your gift, but you don't threaten me in any way. Praise God. So know what you can do and what you cannot do and accept it. If I stay here now and sing, you will, you will, tell, you will know that uh, Pastor Grace is not here. You know your grace. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. So, now, however, not accepting your weakness and acknowledge, acknowledging them is self-sabotage. Because if you know you are weak in an area and you don't accept it, how can you improve on it? How can you do something about it? And you are rejecting the fact that you, know you are weak here. You don't have strength here. There is no pride in not accepting that you don't have strength in this area. When you do accept, then you will, help will come your way. So whatever help is offered, you will receive. You will, not, you, <laughs> you will not describe the help as not as not suitable. Have you seen somebody drowning? He's drowning. Then they throw a lifeline. He said, no, the lifeline is red. Because it is red, I'm not going to hold on to you. He drown. When a person is drowning, any help you see, you jump. Is that not so? You jump on it. You hold on to that rope, whatever the color. And somebody say, if, if it's a woman that throw the rope, you will still hold on. Some men will say, I don't want to listen to a woman. If you are drowning and the woman come, and the woman is the one who will save you, will you not be saved? You will be saved. So forget all that one of gender is a woman and a man. Praise God. If there is problem, let's solve it. If it's a woman that is bringing it, accept it. If it's a man that is bringing it, accept it. Know where you are weak and receive help. Knowing yourself. It's acknowledging your wins and your mistakes. We all make mistakes. What's a healthy self-worth? What is a healthy self-worth? I won in this area. I don't like football for only one reason, because it's not win-win. There will be somebody who will win and be shouting, and there will be somebody who will be crying. So I said, in this life now, let's do win-win. With Jesus, well, it's all games. Okay, well, I don't know. Uh, well, maybe I'm not a game person then. End of story. But in Jesus, it's win-win. You win, I win. Everybody here in Jesus is win-win. Jesus is the only place where you win and win and everybody is winning. There is no level to your winning. That's what I'm saying. You can overtake the general overseer of this mission. If there's no, and you are not comparing yourself to another parish. Excuse me, stop that. This parish is unique. There is no parish. Do you know why? Because the leader is unique. There's nobody like us on the earth. Any parish you go is the same. That parish is unique to itself based on the leadership of that. If somebody else should come and take over, that person will never do things like us. So you are not going to come and say, ah! Yeah, when, when they were here, they, no, no, no. They, 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 them have gone. This is the new. So some of us are stuck in the mud. In certain areas of life, still waiting for the old that has gone. Old has since gone. You are still comparing old. That's why you, the person is stuck in the mud. So you see some people, they won't settle down in a church. They are coming from somewhere. When they carry leg here, they will say, ah, <laughs> in that place where I was coming, they don't carry leg like that. You are in yesterday. Yesterday. Those people who live in yesterday, they don't go to their future. If you continue to stay in yesterday, you will never go to the future. 
Things are changing per second, per second, per time. Things are changing. You can't stop change. Change is unstoppable. The only thing that will change will bulldoze you out of the way if you don't want to change. Because change is constant. Change is current. Change is continuous. So we must keep changing. We must be willing to keep changing. You can't say this is how we have done it. Yesterday, in our forefathers' time, we did it like that. While we that end, we are continuing to do it like that. You will become, what's the word? Obsolete. Go and ask Kodak, where is that camera that they take? And then you print it and put it in water and blow it. it it's back. Uh, okay. Fashion. You know they are turning it around. Uh, praise God. There was once they were carrying Afro like this. So it's back. Praise God. But, excuse me, when the season goes, something else comes. It's just going round and round. What I'm saying is that change is constant. It keeps changing. Things keep changing. Acknowledging it. And then forgiving yourself for your past mistakes. Forgiving yourself. You have to. Forgive yourself for your past mistakes. Then how do I build a healthy self-worth? We have just looked at what's the head he said. So I said again, know yourself. Let's look at Romans 5, 8. Romans 5, 8. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. We were worthy even though we were sinners. God showed how worthy we were by dying for us. You are good enough for God. That's all that matters. If you are good enough for God, that's all you need. No more, no less. I mean, God is the greatest. God is the ultimate. If God accepts me, what does it matter if you don't? Praise God. Who is a human being, I ask? Know your what? Mark 8, 36 to 37. What's the what of a human being? Mark 8, 36 to 37. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? That means, ladies and gentlemen, 195 nations on the earth. 195. According to them. Every wealth that is in every nation, including the one on the earth, underneath the earth that has not been seen, all the mineral resources, including the wealth in the sea, if you put all together, they are not worth one soul. It's not worth you. Nobody can even own a whole street from the beginning to the end. Much less owning the whole world and everything that is in it, if you put it together, it cannot pay for your soul. It cannot pay for your soul. If we understand this, when you are in government, if they bring money to you, you will say, that's an insult to my God. The reason why many of us leaders, we are building leaders now, leaders of tomorrow, we are building all of you now. The reason why people enter into corruption is because they don't know their worth. International companies, let me tell you something, Africa is rising. No, it will rise. The Western world, they've come to their peak. There is a reverser now. I hope you see it. Prepare yourself. If you don't have a home in Africa, get one. I'm telling you, Africa will rise. They have come to their peak. It's changing. But we have to lead, we have, we need leaders that will be, that we understand the worth of human beings. Not leaders that we carry their fellow human beings and go and be committing all kinds of Error. Not leaders that will sell their nation for their own benefit. If you understand that the whole money in the world cannot pay for your soul, nobody can bribe you. None. No matter what they bring. Even if they bring the biggest diamond, maybe like the one with the royal family now. I, I think I, I hear it came from Sierra Leone or somewhere. If they bring it before you, you know what the Western world do? They bring bags of money to our African leaders. Those ones see money and they sell the country. Now you will be finding leaders who will not sell. 
Leaders who are patriotic. Leaders who know their worth. In the, in the Afro-Caribbean continent, who will turn those continents back to God and do something worthy with it. A very interesting time that we are in. Praise God. Know your worth. Know your worth. Because something somewhere is going to come to offer you something. So know your word before it comes. Know your word before it comes. Let's see Psalm 49, verse 6 and 9. Psalm 49, verse 6 and 9. They trust in their wealth and boast of great riches. Yet they cannot redeem themselves from debt by paying a ransom to God. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot pay God. When it is, die, it is time to go, the riches go, and the poor will go. You can't pay God. So let's understand our worth. Don't drop your worth in pursuit of wealth. Don't leave your relationship with God in pursuit of wealth. Everything you will acquire can never pay for your soul. It can't. What will it profit you if you lose your soul? Because you are chasing wealth. Look at how important God, man is. Then God said, Genesis 1, 26 and 28. As I begin to tie it down. Genesis 1, 26 and 28. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image. To be like us. You know why Eve failed? Eve did not realize her self-worth. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, the same thing that made Eve fail is what is making us fail. When the devil came and said, you will be like God, she didn't know that she was already like God. She didn't know. She desired to be like God. You are already like God. Why would you want to be like what you are, you are already? That is deception. Many of us are still walking in that deception. We are already God already. So don't let the devil offer you something that is not worthy. God created you in his image and in his likeness. Praise God. Colossians 2.10. Colossians 2.10. So you also are complete. Through your union with Christ, who is the head of every ruler and authority. You are complete. Through your union with in Christ. This is not just about positive thinking. I'm not teaching here about positive philosophy or psychology. No. I'm talking about the truth. The truth of who you really are. What's your word? Know your human self. Know your word. Do a self-assessment based on the word of God. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Don't be threatened. Anxiety and depression comes. I've not achieved this. I've not achieved that. That's not who you are. You are a person first before your achievement. Who am I? Some of us, we think it doesn't matter what the issue is. They tell you that unless you are married, you are not worthy. Lies. They say, <laughs> I tell people, many unmarried people in the Bible, we are still reading about them today. Mary Magdalene was never married. Paul was never married. Joshua was never married. John the Baptist was never married. Elijah, Elisha, they were never married. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. People without husbands or wives did great and mighty things on earth. Don't let that hold you down. People without children. Why are you not moving? I don't have children. Excuse me, that's a lie. People without children are achieving great and mighty things. What is that excuse that is keeping you down? For you to be able to stand up, to enter into the purpose of God for your life, you have to disconnect yourself from all your excuses. And sit down and say, okay, God, what am I here to do? What am I here to do? And face that thing that you are here to do. Deborah was a judge in Israel. She was a mother. She had a husband called Lapidot. And they didn't tell us. You know, sometimes the Bible is quiet. They didn't tell us whether she has children. But she was a judge. She was a married woman. 
So you can be married and still be successful. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was a woman with many children. Some of us will use children as excuses not to become. Why will a child stop you from becoming? You have your child, you carry yourself, you face your journey. What you have been called to do, you do it. Once you know where you are heading, then you will get there. Praise God. Know your human worth. What are your needs? Know it. Why do I want, why do I want what, what I want? Know it. What do I like and, why do I, and what do I dislike? Know it. Know yourself. What is my goal in life? What's your goal? Ha, what's your goal? Where are you going? What do you want to achieve? What have you decided that you want to become? What's your goal in life? Hey, if you enter bus and you don't know where you are going, anyone who is coming down, you come down too. Have you not seen them wondering about? No destination. But those who know where they are going, even if everybody comes down from the bus and you are the only one, do you come down? You still sit down because you have not arrived at where? Your destination. That means you know where you are going. Know where you are going in life. No. Where are you going? So you can map out a path for yourself and disconnect all the distractions and face your journey. Know where you are going. Praise God. Don't be afraid to look inside. Do I sincerely understand myself? Why do I behave in certain ways? Why do I do what I do? What's my passion? What's your passion? What are you passionate about? What can we see in you and say, God, this person is, I know this person is passionate about this thing, this one thing. What is your passion? So people will tell me that they have passion. I'm waiting. I, where, where, where is the passion? You don't tell people you have passion. Your passion will speak out for you. Your passion will wake you up in the night. Your passion will wake you up in the morning. Your passion will drive you. Your passion will cause you to do what others are not doing. Because it's a passion. You enjoy doing it. What's your passion? Where are you passionate? What's your purpose? Why are you afraid? What's your struggles? What are your habits? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Do an analysis of yourself to help you know where you want to go in life. And I can tell you clearly, there will be situations or relationship that will be dragging you away from where you are supposed to go. Please understand that there will be time where you have to put that aside and face where you are going. Your strength gives you advantage over others. What are they? What are those things that gives, gives you advantage over others? Your weaknesses place you at a disadvantage to others. What are the weaknesses that place you at a disadvantage to others? Opportunities are everywhere. But if you don't have eyes to see, well, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. If you can't see them, how are you going to take it? How are you going to take these opportunities? We have to see opportunities. What, what are opportunities? I, I love Heathrow Terminal 5. As, as at the last time I was there, there's a big signboard. The world is full of opportunities. Let's take you there. The, the world is full of opportunities. What opportunities do you see inside this church? You know there are opportunities there. In this church, this very church that we are in. Have you seen it? There are opportunities everywhere. In your community, opportunities everywhere. Are you taking advantage of the opportunities that surround you? What are you doing with your opportunities? What are the threats in, your ele in the elements, in the environment, that can cause trouble for you? What are the threats that can cause trouble? Do you know them? Knowing your self-worth. It's all about you. It's not about anybody else. Let us bow our heads. Tell yourself, I'm going somewhere. 
I need to know where that where is. <laughs> Talk to God. God is not an author of confusion. He has a destination that is a great one for you and I. He wants us to get somewhere. But we cannot go to these places without knowing who we are. We've got to know. Why don't you thank God for creating you wonderfully, marvelously, and that there is nobody like you on the face of the earth? Thank God there's something for you to do. Isn't that amazing? God didn't bring you on this earth to be not doing anything. He brought you here for a purpose. First of all, thank him for it. And tell him that God, please open my eyes to see the purpose why you have sent me here on earth. Let me show you one scripture. There are only two purposes in life, two. You'll find it in Proverbs 3.21. Let me just drop that for you so you can, you can use that for yourself. Proverbs 3.21, and I'm going to be using the Passion Translation, but just listen to it. It will reference the NLT. It says, my child, never drift off course from these two goals for your life. What are the two goals? Number one, to walk in wisdom. Number two, to discover your purpose. Only two goals. One, to walk in wisdom. Two, to discover your purpose. Now I want you to pray. And say, Lord, <laughs> if I have been drifting through life, of course, I've been going here, there, not really knowing where I'm going. Oh, Lord, help me. You want to pray? Help me to discover my purpose. Every day is dawning. We are counting days. We are already in October. Oh God, have mercy upon my soul. The Bible says redeeming the times. The time that have been wasted can be redeemed. I say, Father, redeem. Help me to redeem the times. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Just help me to discover myself so that I can walk in wisdom. That's what it means. If you know who you are, you will walk in wisdom. You will be wise in your choices. You will be wise in your understanding. You will be wise in your decisions. Father, help me. Help me to know who I am. Help me to walk in wisdom. Help me to discover my purpose. That last line says, don't ever forget how it empowers you. Purpose will empower, empower you. Father, help me to discover my purpose for existence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' name have we prayed. Are you online or are you here? First, before you can discover purpose, you have to discover the owner, the one who created your purpose. And if you do not yet know the Lord, you would have a wrong value for yourself. So I want to invite you, if you are here and you, are, you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to invite you to quickly do that. As you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he will walk with you to discover the purpose for your creation. And he will empower you by giving you his Holy Spirit that will help you walk the earth so that you can deliver purpose on earth before you exit. So I would like you to pray this prayer with me. My heavenly father, I thank you, Lord, because you created me. And Lord, I know I have gone astray. I'm not walking in your ways and in your purpose. Father, please, I ask you to save my soul. Lord, I ask you to receive me to yourself. And I ask you, oh God, to write my name in your book of life. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come into my life to lead me on this journey of discovering my purpose. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Thank you for listening.
put your hands together for the King of Kings and for the Lord of Lords for giving us the privilege to enjoy the teachings of today. My notes are full and I've learned so much. I pray that God will open our eyes to discover our purpose here on earth in the name of Jesus. May God help us to be able to evaluate our self-worth, to be able to know and know how to apply it to wisdom in the name of Jesus. We will not overestimate who we are by our self-worth, neither would we underestimate it. And that God will give us the grace to be able to examine our weaknesses and our strength and also discover our divine purpose and fulfill it in the name of Jesus. While the pastor was teaching, she drew closer to the scripture the Lord wants me to use to encourage us so that we can be able to give this very particular afternoon. And the scripture, she went to Psalm 49, and he wants me to look at Psalm 50 and use that to encourage us. A few years ago, I had a hunger for healing, and I trusted God for divine health. And God led me in year 2001, precisely, to fast three days a day from January to December. Ended up fasting 156 days. And after that year, God started to heal me from every sickness that was in my body. And then the next year, I asked him again that I am still falling sick every one month for malaria. I don't need malaria again. And I pleaded, and he said, you want total healing? I said, yes. He said, okay. We are going to fast five days a week from January to December. I ended up fasting 260 days. I'm not telling you to do that, but I'm just sharing my testimony to encourage you and to encourage you to give this very particular day. The long and short of it is that the next year, 2022, I was thinking of probably God will tell me that I should fast again because this time around, God has taken away the sickness but I needed divine favor and divine establishment. I wanted him to bless me, enlarge my course. I was praying the prayer of Jabez, and God told me, no, this time around, you are going to increase your giving. I was, at that time, 2002, I was giving a maximum of 50 naira. I was still back in Nigeria. And God wanted me to enlarge, to enlarge. He wanted to enlarge my course. He said, expand your giving apart from my tithe. So I started keeping aside what I earn to make sure every particular worship day I had something to give and I had to increase it from 50 naira to double. And from there, he kept on stretching my faith to give. And as I was giving, he was enlarging my course. He was blessing me from all round sources I never even imagined. Psalm 50 there talks about our God being the owner of the Shekinah glory and also the cattle upon a thousand hills in verse 10 belongs to him. Our God is more than able to sell some cows and settle your bills in his own special way. Verse 15 of that scripture tells us that when we are able to pay our vows in verse 14 and we are able to also give our pledges to God, he said, when we ask for anything, anything, he is more than able to do it for us. I don't know what you have been asking God to do for you. I don't know what you are trusting him for. But God is encouraging us this very particular day to give. He said, when we give, it shall be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. What do you want God to do for you? When you give this very particular day faithfully, call upon him in the days of your trouble, and our God is sure to meet you at the point of your need. He will deliver you, and he will glorify you in the name of Jesus. Are you thinking of what to give now? There are various ways you can give. You can give by bank transfer, which many of us have been doing. I encourage more of that so that you save us the puzzle of going to the bank to make deposit. But if you have your cash here and you have not been able to, of course, open a bank account, you are free, take up an envelope, the ushers will give you that. 
putting your money and you can be able to give when the, the choir rises up to give us a song to rejoice while we take our offering. If you have your offerings here or you have done your bank transfer already or you would like to pay by your bank card, you have your bank card here, we have a PayPal machine here where you can be able to do that at the end of the service. As you rise up on your feet, let's just talk to God in prayer as we give today. And we believe that our God, who is the owner of the Shekinah glory, who owns the cattle upon a thousand hills, he will never leave you at the level you are. As you give, he will make men to give unto you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you because we are obeying your word today. As we give, O oh Lord, we ask the Father in obedience to your word, open the windows of heaven. Pour us a blessing that our storehouses will not be able to contain it in the name of Jesus. For as many who are returning their tithes, O oh God, I pray for them in the name that is greater than every other name. Let God arise, O oh Lord, and let his sons and daughters be lifted up financially in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Jesus, mighty name, we are prayed. Choir. Praise the Lord. Please let's rise to our feet as we dance unto the Lord as a thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Our God is good. Let's put our hands together for the King of glory.
name of our God for his faithfulness in bringing us even into a place where we can worship him. We want to really appreciate God for all of us who are in here this morning. We believe that God has blessed us mightily and we come to bless us in Jesus' name. We want to especially welcome those who join us online. We know that God has blessed you as he has blessed us and uh, I believe that you are looking forward to another beautiful day in his presence. So on Wednesday, we are here for our Bible study, which is called Revelation Hour, and the time is 7 to 8.30 in the evening. And as you come, the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. On Friday, we have our prayer service. It's from 7 to 8.30, and it's online. Join us, and as you do, the Lord will bless you my faith in Jesus' name. We'll just take a few prayer before we go. Um, Osha, can I have the prayer baskets, please? Praise the Lord.